Today, we talked to Sequoia's Michelle Bailey about the state of crypto and VC funding. Tether launches a new stablecoin despite all that uncertainty in crypto markets. And Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin wants to create digital souls. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Kate Rooney. Crypto prices in the red yet again today. Bitcoin dropped to just 29,000, Ether to just over 1,800, and Polygon taking a big hit to about 60 cents, about 3.6% lower in the past 24 hours. Analysts over at JP Morgan, though, think Bitcoin prices could bounce back soon, valuing the digital currency at $38,000. Even more, they're calling digital assets their, quote, preferred alternative asset class over real estate. All that despite the recent volatility in crypto markets. Okay, on to the top stories. More news on the stablecoin front. Tether is launching a new stablecoin that's pegged to the Mexican peso. Tether executives say they're expanding their stablecoin offerings because of rising demand for blockchain and crypto assets from Mexican companies and across Latin America. That's according to Cointelegraph. The peso pegged stablecoin will be called MXNT on exchanges. It joins Tether's growing roster of fiat-backed digital currencies. Those now include USDT, which is pegged to the US dollar, EURT, which follows the euro, and CNHT, which tracks the Chinese yuan. There has been some chaos in stablecoin markets in recent weeks with algorithmically backed tokens like UST essentially falling to zero. Tether's USDT token briefly fell below its dollar peg as investors dumped stablecoins. JP Morgan is investing in crypto risk manager Elliptic. The investment bank joined a recent Series C funding round that raised about $60 million, including investors like SoftBank, Wells Fargo, and Albion VC. Firms like Elliptic aim to help traditional financial institutions and government agencies with compliance and risk assessment on crypto investing. The news comes as JP Morgan says it's finding new ways to incorporate blockchain into its trading and lending divisions. Bloomberg reports that this month the bank used blockchain for collateral settlements. The bank essentially tokenized money market shares from BlackRock on its private blockchain network and used them as collateral. The JP Morgan exec called it a, quote, frictionless transfer of collateral assets on an instantaneous basis. Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin is proposing a new way to handle digital identity. He's calling them soul-bound tokens. In a recent paper outlining his vision for a decentralized society, Buterin proposed the adoption of a new kind of non-tradable NFT that would be held on wallets that he calls souls. Buterin proposed using these soul-bound tokens, or SBTs for short, as a way to build digital resumes, establish credentials, and prove ownership or creatorship of digital works of art. It's a dense paper, but in short, Buterin is proposing a way to store and track your digital life in a single wallet. He says that will help unlock a path to what he's calling a decentralized society. Now on to our main story. I sat down with Michelle Bailey. She's a partner at Sequoia Capital, which has a $500 million fund geared towards crypto investing. We talked about how the wild swings in crypto markets have been affecting startup funding and whether cryptocurrencies look prepared to weather rising interest rates and a potential recession. She also talks about the venture capital firm's warning to startup founders to cut costs, calling it a, quote, crucible moment. Let's start with um, the crypto fund, though. Se Sequoia now has a dedicated crypto fund, $500 million. What's the startup landscape looking like right now in crypto? Are you seeing valuations come down? I'd love to get your thoughts on how that's being affected, if at all, by what's going on in macro markets and uh, with public markets right now. It's a great question. So, yes, we have a crypto fund that's focused on primarily liquid tokens, as well as other investments. That's in addition to our existing funds, seed, venture, and growth, which continue to invest in crypto. Um, and what we're seeing is uh, certainly you know, a different experience of the market for founders for the last two years. But the thing that we always remember, and Sequoia has had you know, 50 years of experience investing through multiple market cycles and technology cycles, is that often some of the best founders come out during this time because they're here for the right reasons. They have a problem they want to solve, a technology they want to build. And so we've had great conversations with, with many founders and are very optimistic about the next generation of companies. I'm curious what those conversations are like. Uh, what are you hearing from founders right now? Is there 
a sense of nervousness when it comes to either having enough runway for funding or what's going on with maybe token prices as well. What are those conversations like? Yeah, there's certainly a mix. I think, you know, it's something that, again, given our experience, we're able to counsel founders who have to deal with things like that because public companies, CEOs, of course, right, have to deal with that. And that's an experience that many companies go through where there are certain ways that your company is valued that may not be your fault. Uh, it's to certain changes it has nothing to do with the business performance. And yet here we are. And so it's just guidance that we give to founders to prepare. There's no need in this environment to panic or to overreact, but you do need to plan for a different environment going forward. And that may depend on your business. It could be differences in consumer demand, retail volume, uh, you know, fundraising, but just plan for a different environment going forward than you've probably had the last two years. And maybe it's the same for you and that's great, but if it's not, you want to be ready and that's the advice. And you said, so it's a little bit different for each startup. Um, what is the playbook here? I guess if there's something consistent across the board, what's your advice to, to founders who may be listening to this and may be thinking about their own companies? Absolutely. Well, Sequoia's advice, I would say, you know, covers a lot of areas, but the key takeaways we tried to impress on founders is, again, don't panic, but plan for a different environment, both in your fundraising and, you know, potentially in, in your business. Make sure you have the runway you need to keep going. Uh, and also look for areas where you can trim. Maybe there were areas where you were going to go into a whole new product line, a whole new market really consider whether that investment is worth it at this time, given a change in the cost of capital. But then most importantly is keep your foot on the accelerator in core product and R&D. This was one of Sequoia's biggest takeaways from 2008 and something that we're really excited about with the companies that we work with and the incredible founders that we have the privilege of backing is that if you take this time and you really invest in your product and you push your advantage or differentiation versus others in the field, you can come out of this much stronger and in a, in, a, in a much better market position than others going into it who would be less prepared. And so what we're excited is to have the leaders come out even stronger than before. So you talked about this on Twitter, at least, um, that crypto has really survived other winters, but has never been through a global macro storm yet. And the point that Bitcoin was really launched in 2008 Crypto has really existed in this zero interest rate environment. Uh, what should crypto founders expect right now as we see rates go up? This really, like you said, is a totally different scenario and backdrop than a lot of founders have seen. Yeah, absolutely. And that's really the point we wanted to impress, especially for crypto founders, you know, but all founders, especially if they founded their startups recently, haven't worked or operated in this environment yet. And so just recognize this is different. We're not in the same position as we were in 2020 when, you know, things had a dip and then we also had a lot of stimulus and a lot of support. Right. So we're in a different position in terms of the global macro environment. And I think that will have different impacts depending on on who you are. But one certain thing is that depending on what part of the life cycle you're in, fundraising may not be as easy as others and to plan for you know, a change in the environment uh, accordingly is really the big takeaway. There were also some reports today of Sequoia issuing a warning to really all startup founders, not just crypto founders. And essentially, like you're saying, not to expect a quick recovery here. You know, any comment on what the firm, you know, Sequoia as a firm is recommending to founders? And is that something that you guys have sort of decided as a firm to go out and say, you know, issue sort of a warning like we saw two years ago with what people were describing as sort of the black swan warning. Uh, is that something that the firm is taking a stance on and really trying to, to get out there? We gathered our founders and had a you know founders only meeting and we try to just share advice on the environment. So our founder community is incredibly diverse. Some of them are steeped in finance. Some of them are more technical or more product or design and have less expertise in that. And so what we want to do is gather everyone and just have them like we we're talking about, Kate, understand the environment, that the cost of capital has changed and to plan accordingly for that. And some of the key messages are from operators who have lived through these. So our partners were Lafota, who was CFO of PayPal, Alfred Lin, who was 
working at Tell Me and Zappos and Carl Eschenbach, who worked at VMware. We have a lot of operators around the table who have lived through different market cycles and technology cycles. And some of the takeaways from them are, you know, of course, like we're saying, don't panic, but do plan. You don't need to overreact right away, but you do need to make it your top priority and figure out what, if anything, you need to do by the end of this month to be in the best position to succeed and to gather your team and make sure all the executives are on the same page to act quickly about it. It's not one of those things where some founders might want to wait and say, oh, let me just wait, you know, several more quarters and see how things go. No, this needs your attention this month. You need to think about it this week. You need to think about it this month and make sure you're in a good position. Okay, that's all for today. Check out the full interview with Sequoia's Michelle Bailey at cnbc.com slash crypto world. We'll be back here again tomorrow and we'll see you then.